Hello all. Welcome to this video on vector calculus. Today I'll be talking about some useful identities for computing gradients, backpropagation and automatic differentiation. Here we'll see some useful gradients that are frequently required in a machine learning context. So we'll use TR as trace and DET as determinant and f of x inverse as the inverse of f of x, assuming that it exists. Dou by dou x of f of x transpose can be written as dou of f of x by dou x, the whole transpose. Dou by dou x of trace of f of x is trace of dou of f of x by dou x. Dou by dou x of determinant of f of x can be written as determinant of f of x into trace of f of x inverse dou of f of x by dou x. Dou by dou x of f of x inverse can be written as minus f of x inverse dou f of x by dou x into f of x inverse. Dou of a transpose x inverse b by dou x can be written as minus x inverse transpose a into b transpose x inverse transpose. Dou of x transpose a by dou x can be written as a transpose. Dou of a transpose x by dou x can be written as a transpose. Dou of a transpose x b by dou x can be written as a b transpose. Dou of x transpose bx by dou x can be written as x transpose b plus b transpose. Dou by dou s of x minus a s, the whole transpose into w into x minus a s can be written as minus 2 into x minus a s transpose w into a for any symmetric w. Now we will look into back propagation and automatic differentiation. In many machine learning applications, we find good model parameters by performing gradient descent, which relies on the fact that we can compute the gradient of a learning objective with respective to the parameters of the model. For a given objective function, we can obtain the gradient with respect to the model parameters using calculus and applying the chain rule. We already saw this when we solved the gradient of a squared loss with respect to the parameters of a linear regression model. Let us consider the function f of x, which is root of x square plus exponential of x square plus cos of x square plus exponent of x square. By application of chain rule and noting that the differentiation is linear, we can compute the gradient as given here. On opening the brackets and rearranging the terms, we will get this as the final expression. Writing out the gradient in this explicit way is often impractical since it often results in a very lengthy expression for a derivative. In practice, it means that if we are not careful, the implementation of the gradient could be significantly more expensive than computing the function, which impose unnecessary overhead. For training deep neural network models, the backpropagation algorithm is an effective way to compute the gradient of an error function with respect to the parameters of the model. Now we look into gradients in a deep network. An area where the chain rule is used to an extreme is that of deep learning, where the function value y is composed as a many level function composition, which is y given by fk, composition fk minus 1, composition etc., composition f1 of x, which can be written as fk of fk minus 1 of etc., f1 of x, where x are the inputs or the images. Y are the observations or class labels and every function fi where i ranges from 1 to k possess its own parameters. In neural networks with multiple layers, we have functions fi of x i minus 1 which can be written as sigma a i minus 1 plus b i minus 1 in the ith layer. Here x 
i minus 1 is the output of layer i minus 1 and sigma an activation function such as the logistic sigmoid that is 1 by 1 plus e raised to minus x tan h or a rectified linear unit which is RELU. In order to train these models we require the gradient of a loss function L with respect to all model parameters aj, bj where j varies from 1 to k. This also requires us to compute the gradient of L with respect to the inputs of each layer. For example, if we have the inputs x and observations y and a network structure defined by f0 given by x, fi which can be written as sigma i, a i minus 1, f i minus 1 plus b i minus 1 where i ranges from 1 to k. Then we may be interested in finding a j b j for j equal to 0 to k minus 1 such that the squared loss which is l of theta given by norm of y minus f k of theta x the whole square is minimized where theta is a 0, b 0 etc. a k minus 1, b k minus 1. The diagram here is a forward pass in a multi-layer neural network to compute the loss L as a function of the inputs X and the parameters A i, B i. To obtain the gradients with respect to the parameter set theta, we require the partial derivatives of L with respect to the parameters theta j, which is a j, b j, of each layer j, which varies from 0 to k minus 1. The chain rule allows us to determine the partial derivatives as given here. We see a pattern in these set of equations. The orange terms are partial derivatives of the output of a layer with respect to its inputs, whereas the blue terms are partial derivatives of the output of a layer with respect to its parameters. Assuming we have already computed the partial derivatives do L by do theta i plus 1, then most of the computation can be reused to compute do L by do theta. The additional terms that we need to compute are indicated in the boxes. In this diagram, we see a backward pass in a multi-layer neural network to compute the gradients of the loss function. Now we look into automatic differentiation. It turns out that backpropagation is a special case of a general technique in numerical analysis called automatic differentiation. We can think of automatic differentiation as a set of techniques to numerically evaluate the exact up to machine precision gradient of a function by working with intermediate variables and applying the chain rule. Automatic differentiation applies a series of elementary arithmetic operations, for example, addition and multiplication and elementary functions like sine, cos, exponential, log, etc. By applying the chain rule to these operations, the gradient of quite complicated functions can be computed automatically. Automatic differentiation applies to general computer programs and has forward and reverse modes. This is a symbol graph representing the data flow from inputs x to output y via some intermediate variables a, b. If we were to compute the derivative dy by dx, we would apply the chain rule and obtain dy by dx written as dy by db into db by da into da by dx. Intuitively, the forward and reverse mode differ in the order of multiplication. Due to associativity of matrix multiplication, we can choose between dy by dx given by dy by db into db by da into da by dx or dy by dx given by dy by db into db by da into da by dx. Now the equation here would be the reverse mode because the gradients are propagated backward through the graph that is reverse to the data flow. This equation would be the forward mode where the gradients flow with the data from left to right through the graph. 
in the example we will see in the next slide we will be focusing on reverse mode automatic differentiation which is back propagation in the context of neural networks where the input dimensionality is often much higher than the dimensionality of the labels the reverse mode is computationally significantly cheaper than the forward mode let us consider the function f of x given by root of x square plus exponential of x square plus cos of x square plus exponential of x square. If we were to implement a function f on a computer, we would be able to save some computation by using intermediate variables. Like I use a for x square, then exponential of a becomes b. Now c can be written as a plus b. d will be root of c, e will be cos of c and f will be d plus e. Now this is the same kind of thinking process that occurs while applying the chain rule. Note that the preceding set of equations require fewer operations than a direct implementation of the function f of x which we saw before. Now the corresponding computation graph is given here. It shows the flow of data and computation required to obtain the function value f. The set of equations that include the intermediate variables can be thought of as a computation graph. That is a representation that is widely used in implementation of neural network software libraries. We can directly compute the derivatives of the intermediate variables with respect to their corresponding inputs by recalling the definition of the derivative of elementary functions. So we will obtain dou a by dou x as 2x, dou b by dou a as exponential of a, dou c by dou d as 1 which is same as dou c by dou b, dou d by dou c as 1 by 2 root c, dou e by dou c as minus sin of c, dou f by dou d as 1 which is same as dou f by dou e. By looking at the computation graph, we can compute dou f by dou x by working backward from the output and obtain dou f by dou c which is given by dou f by dou d into dou d by dou c plus dou f by dou e into dou e by dou c. Dou f by dou b can be written as dou f by dou c into dou c by dou b. Dou f by dou a can be written as dou f by dou b by dou b by dou a into dou f by dou c into dou c by dou a. Dou f by dou x can be written as dou f by dou a into dou a by dou x which is written here. Note that we implicitly applied the chain rule to obtain dou f by dou x. By substituting the results of the derivatives of the elementary functions, we get dou f by dou c as 1 into 1 by 2 root c plus 1 into minus sin of c. Dou f by dou b which is equal to dou f by dou c into 1. Dou f by dou a which is equal to dou f by dou b into exponential of a plus dou f by dou c into 1. And dou f by dou x as dou f by dou a into 2x. By thinking of each of the derivatives above as a variable, we observe that the computation required for calculating the derivative is of simpler, similar complexity as the computation of the function itself. This is quite counterintuitive since the mathematical expression for the derivative dou f by dou x we saw before is significantly more complicated than the mathematical expression of the function f of x we saw here. Automatic differentiation is a formalization of the example we just solved. Let x1 etc xd be the input variables to the function xd plus 1 etc xd minus 1 be the intermediate variables and xd be the output variable. Then the computation graph can be expressed as follows. For i is equal to d plus 1 to d, xi is equal to gi of x p a of xi, where gi are the elementary functions, 
XPA of XI are the parent nodes of the variable XI in the graph. Given a function defined in this way, we can use the chain rule to compute the derivative of the function in a step-by-step -step fashion. Recall that by definition f is equal to xd, hence dou f by dou xd is equal to 1. For other variables xi, we apply the chain rule dou f by dou xi giving sigma xj where xi is an element of parent of xj. dou f by dou xj into dou xj by dou xi which is equal to sigma xj, xi element of parent of xj, dou f by dou xj into dou gi by dou xi, where parent of xj is the set of parent nodes of xj in the computation graph. Now the equation here is a forward propagation of a function, whereas the equation here is the backward propagation of the gradient through the computation graph. For a neural network training, we back propagate the error of prediction with respect to the label. Automatic differentiation approach works whenever we have a function that can be expressed as a computation graph where the elementary functions are differentiable. In fact, the function may not even be a mathematical function but a computer program. However, not all the computer programs can be automatically differentiated. For example, if we cannot find differential elementary functions. Programming structures such as for loops and if statements require more care as well. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.